Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And looking at the team stats here for this season, uh, we have a matchup versus Connecticut coming up next. UConn, that is. And there's big news. I mean, we have Carrington coming back from injury. Remember, he's been injured for like the last three games. He's finally back from injury. And Donnie Wolf, I mean, he's been back, but he's still listed as probable, but he's going to play. And you know what? I mean, I'm going to give him the start because I like the spark that he gave to our offense. But look at the stats here. Pretty similar. If you look at the three quarterbacks here, Donnie Wolf, three touchdowns, three picks. Carrington, four touchdowns, four picks. Zach DeLuca, two touchdowns, three picks. So <laughs> every quarterback is making a lot of turnovers. They both, they all three have like similar ratings. Let's look at rushing here. Ingram is obviously our bell cow. Um, he definitely leads the way with yards and attempts. And no other guy has over 100 yards. Uh, Glenn Hall is going to be our second closest. And he's not even... He's still 12 yards away, but he does have two touchdowns. He only gets in when Ingram is tired. Looking at the receivers, Medley. I mean, I'm surprised Medley's leading our team in receptions. I thought it'd be Cantrell, but Cantrell isn't too far behind. He's got 27 receptions, 401 yards, and three touchdowns. He's leading the way as far as touchdowns. But one guy I'm surprised about is Herman Rogers. I mean, he's only five receptions behind Cantrell, but I thought he would be having a bigger impact. Maybe if I move him to the slot, he'll have a higher impact. But I listened to you guys, man. You guys said you guys wanted me to switch playbooks on offense. So we're going to switch playbooks. I'm going to get to that next. But uh, looking at defense here, uh, Spencer is leading the way. This is usually the guy that I use her. So it's kind of no surprise. But remember, I don't switch guys on defense. I let the computer do the tackling. Um, the only guy I control, like I said, is Spencer. Uh, but looking at the rest of these guys, Frederick leads the way, the other safety, then Wiley and Ramsor. I mean, these guys are in the middle of the field, so it's expected, but Noah Carter has actually has a lot of tackles. And this is a guy that gives up uh, so many deep balls and he leads our team in picks. Look at this. He leads our team in picks. You guys see it every week. He's giving up big plays on the left side of our field, but somehow he leads the team in picks probably because they're picking on him the most. So he gets the most targets. Indiana, I'm going to go with their playbook because uh, you guys said you guys wanted to see some spread. You want to see us spread it out a little bit more. And they have an air raid type of offense. So it's going to be interesting seeing this uh, form together. I mean, because we do have not too many playmakers on offense. I mean, we have Herman Rogers. We have made people better than what they are. But realistically, we don't really have many playmakers. We don't have speed at all. So, I mean, this is what our coach philosophy is looking like going up against Connecticut. Uh, let's just look at what they look like here. So we're four and four. They're two and six on the year. So they're kind of horrible right now. Uh, as you can see, they have bad defense. Pass defense rank 110th. So maybe this Indiana offense will come in handy during this game because they can't uh, defend the pass. If you look at their past games, um, they've had like a losing streak. They started out two and zero. Oh, and then they went on a huge losing streak, losing to Michigan, Buffalo, Houston, USF, Cincy, and UCF. So, I mean, they played some tough teams. I mean, this is a tough schedule. I mean, the one team you can say they shouldn't have lost to maybe is Buffalo, 1-6. and six. But besides that, look at all their opponents, 5-1, and 5-1, and 5-3, and 6-2. and two. So now they're going up against us at 4-4. Four and four. So let's hop into it, man. Let's go. So the UConn offense starts this game out with the ball coming out and sheriffs at quarterback newsom at running back Bruh. and on the first play newsom gets loose look at that zigzag he's zigzagging all the way up to the five yard line for a 63 yard gain on the first play and on the next play he barrels through three marquette defenders arkeel newsom gets in for the touchdown and that was easy i mean man what happened to this monster defense that we've been playing the last couple games on the first two plays we get barreled over get pancaked and they go out for a 7-0 lead but we have a new offense we're playing with this indiana playbook and right out the gate you can tell that there's a big difference being made receivers are just getting open medley that time on the play action and on a First and 10, Medley finds an open lane once again, and we find him for the catch. So now we're into the red zone. Derek Wolf, Donnie Wolf, that is, finds Herman Rogers, who we were just talking about not having a great year, but 
I mean, having just an okay year, but this time we're getting him involved early, and he Bruh. gets the early touchdown. So now we tie this game up at seven. But look at this. Almost had the pick, but somehow the UConn receiver feels me coming, and he steps up and catches the ball. And on the next play, LaRue Wiley almost gets the interception. So back-to-back -back bad throws by Sheriff on this drive. And on a third down, we do get to him. That one's going to be Javon Pennington there. He doesn't get the sack, but uh, he at least stops the first down. So now this explosive offense comes back on the field. We're, we're kind of hot right now. On every pass, we're either faking to uh, Ingram or, th or running it, and they don't know what's coming. So Medley is getting involved early, and you can just tell like Medley is going to thrive in this offense because he's just getting open. Like, he's just finding a way to, uh, with these RPOs, to just get open. So on a couple of plays later, into the red zone, and Herman Rogers once again. And maybe this is all he needed. He just needed a change of offense because now he's getting involved. And the Marquette offense goes up 14-7 on this UConn defense. And these first two drives have seemed pretty easy. I mean, we haven't even faced a fourth down or anything. We've just been driving down the field. So here is UConn back on the field. Sheriff's at quarterback. This time he's going to run. He's going to roll it out to the right side. He's going to zigzag on a third down and pick up the first down on that one. So now we're on to the second quarter. Sheriff starts out almost at the 30 yard line. He's gonna find an open receiver. Beals on that one for the for the big game there. And Arkeel Newsom is gonna finish it off. And Newsom is just doing a good job finding holes early in this game. And it's 14-14. This might be turning into another shootout for the Marquette Golden Eagles, but here we are, six minutes left in this second quarter. Finding Herman Rogers down the field, but that was a blown coverage, but we do not have the arm strength to get it down the field. So we actually throw it short. He gets hit. The ball comes out, but we find him once again on a third down, getting to about the 50-yard line. And Herman Rogers, four receptions early in this game. I don't think he's had four receptions this early, but on a couple of plays later, McCray gets loose they play press coverage we throw it over the top and donnie wolf 14 for 16 early in this game three touchdowns in this indiana offense this playbook is actually showing to show like open up the skills of donnie wolf and maybe this is just the offense that he's been needing and we may have found a stable guy at quarterback because remember we've been switching like every week Zach DeLuca, Carrington, Wolf, whoever it is I mean but I think Donnie Wolf has actually shown us some things he's got only 69 throw accuracy but oh my god <laughs> look at that man running over a defender in the hole that was my linebacker too but Donnie Wolf only has 69 accuracy but he's showing that he can get it done but look at the next play the quarterback fumbles it running into the end zone but the big man we got a big man touchdown look at this he picks up the ball runs into the end zone and that is luck straight luck for the UConn offense so this Marquette offense comes back out onto the field giving the ball to Ingram and Jerry Ingram just plays well above his overall well above his ratings and sometimes you have those guys that just play better than what they're rated and I mean look at this more of this offense this time it's Cantrell the impact player on offense for us getting involved on that one so on a first and 10 getting to about the 25 yard line Donnie was gonna throw across his body that one's kind of lucky on my part I throw to McDowell the backup tight end he's in on that one and on a second and goal he's gonna make a move pass the linebacker get in for the touchdown so this is 28 points here in this first half so now UConn has about a minute left to drive down the field but we do stop them they try to get the first down so they we do force them to punt so now there's about 50 seconds left we have one timeout left in this half and we just been spreading the ball out and here McCray getting open once again for the 30 yard gain He's at 80 yards receiving already in this game. So now 40 seconds left. Medley getting open oh over the middle. God. Look at the move that he puts on these two defenders. And look, he makes them run into each other. 
So they completely Damn. missed a dive at each other. What a move that time by Medley. So now we're inside the 10 yard line, 25 seconds left. Donnie was gonna roll out right and gonna find an open Cantrell in the corner of the end zone for the eight yard reception. And look at these stats, 20 for 23, four touchdowns here in the first half. So we do start the second half out with the ball and Donnie Wolf just throwing an absolute dime that time to Stanford. But on a third and three past the 50 yard line, attempting to throw a curl route and Summers is there for the interception and he's gonna take it all the way down and Donnie Wolf's gonna chase him down near the three yard line. So they have three plays to get into the end zone here and they're giving it to Newsom on first and second down. And we stop Newsom on this one on a third down. They give him, give it to him one more time. And Spencer is there for the stop there to hold him. A nice little goal line stand for this defense. And they're like, yo, we can't get into the end zone from here. We're going to kick a field goal, which they smartly do. So once again, we're after an interception, you usually want to come back out running the ball. So we give the ball to Ingram, getting a nice nine-yard gain there. But on a second and nine, trying to throw the ball that time to Stanford. And Donnie Wolf underthrows him. And Joseph gets the interception and runs it all the way back. And we thought that we were on a roll, but two straight interceptions so this Marquette offense not looking good here to start the second half but here's Donnie Wolf rolling out to the right and look at how wide open A is on this play but Donnie Wolf over throws him and that's three straight interceptions and man this spells disaster because we let them right back in this game and the UConn offense, I mean, they have been doing pretty well, but we've been giving them great field position with the interceptions, and we even gave them a touchdown defense, so now they're just driving on a third and nine, getting it to about the 30-yard line, so they do line up for the field goal, and their kicker is going to convert on this one, so now it's just a one point game here towards the end of the third quarter it is still the third quarter here we got a lot of football left and jared ingram getting the handoff up the middle and now we're just going to get some easy throws for donnie wolf because we're not going to throw it on the field because we can tell his confidence is kind of shot throwing down the field so on a second and one keeping the read option on this one donnie wolf getting up to about the 38 yard line there on a nice uh, quarterback keeper so here we go Donnie Wolf like I said get him these easy throws across the middle this time finding Wayne Miller and Wayne Miller with his first catch remember he's had a couple of hot games but he's getting his first catch on this one and on a second and 13 Cantrell is getting to the one yard line but on a second and go after taking a sack on first down Donnie Wolf's gonna sit in the pocket roll out to the right find an open lane and he's gonna not slide and he's gonna get hit pretty hard and he's gonna cough up the ball so another turnover by this marquette offense this time on the expense of donnie wolf fumbling the ball and here we go i mean we're just letting them back in this game time after time and remember it's a one point game up to this point so this offense led by Newsom and Sheriffs. They're getting it going. Here's Newsom getting a handoff to the outside and getting a nice 14 yard gain. So now they are past the 50 yard line. A couple of plays later on a first and 10. Gotcha, Sheriff's gonna have all day in the pocket, but not too much time. Ali Christian, remember we said he was fifth in the nation in sacks. He gets another one added to his resume. And on a third and 10, Sheriff's is attempting to throw to his tight end, Donaldson, but Ramsor is there for the tackle. So on a fourth and four, he's going to drop back, throw to Hopkins over the middle. And that was an easy throw. He sat there in the middle of the zone cover. So Nate Hopkins, the running back, gets the reception on that one. But on a second and goal, Newsom is going to break a tackle, get the pitch, and get to the outside into the end zone. And the UConn offense is going to take the lead. We had a 14-point lead going into halftime. Now the Yukon Huskies lead it. Gotcha, bitch. So they have to go for it on a fourth down and make it a seven-point game, but we do get in for the sack that time. So now three minutes left 
in this game and Donnie Wolf getting tackled that time before the first down that time on the read option so we do have to go for it because I mean it's late in this game we do have three timeouts we could have punt there though but I, I don't like I don't like giving the ball away because the, you never know with this Heisman cheese what they're gonna do so we get to about the 50 yard line that time on the conversion to Cantrell and Ingram running over a defender getting a nice nine yard gain and we need to keep this balance going so they don't you know they can't predict everything we're doing and that time Donnie Wolf throws into traffic but luckily McCray comes up with it and that was a nice throw that time by Donnie Wolf keeping it keeping it away from the defense so here we are we're getting inside the 10 yard line Donnie Wolf finding Medley who's having a huge game well over 100 yards in this one and on a third and goal 20 seconds left in this game Ingram's gonna get the handoff but he's gonna get stuffed this time so one last play to get into the end zone and we trust Ingram we're gonna give it to him spread it out and he gets perfect blocking on that one 89 yards rushing up to this point for Ingram and he converts there and we do have to go for two make it a three-point game and Donnie was gonna roll out right throw across his body doesn't see an open lane the guy was closing in on him but here we go. We have 12 seconds left to hold them. Gotcha, and bitch. Sheriffs is going to take the sack on this one. And it's going to be one last play for them. Make it two. They're going to find their tight end over the middle. One last timeout. They're going to use it. Four seconds left in this game. One last heave towards the end zone. And Sheriffs going to throw it deep. And a great catch downfield. It's over. It's over. And Beals is going to come up with the catch as time expires and the Marquette sidelines are devastated. How did this happen? Playing a cover for Beals goes up and gets it over the top of two defenders. One defender falls over the other straight whiffs. And he breaks a tackle, gets in for the end zone, into the into the end zone for the touchdown. And wow, what a way to end it! After being on a win streak, at that we end it with an hail mary loss. And man, that offense that we started out with so hot, cooled off in the second half after throwing three interceptions, one fumble by Donnie Wolf and that defined the game without those turnovers we would have won this game for sure and man I mean I don't know this is what happens when you have guys in the secondary that can't make great plays they I mean honestly it's the attributes there I mean if they had if they were higher rated if they were better in coverage they would have had that pass but man we we are now under 500 now we were about to be over 500 four and four now we're under 500 so that's devastating so hit subscribe hit that like button we gotta bounce back next week but we are going up against ranked washington so we'll see man we gotta close this game this season out we gotta make it to a bowl game we've made it too far up to this point so let's go